After Typhoon Mawar, it's left so many people without food, shelter, water, and and just overall basic necessities. I'm here with Dan from the American Red Cross. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Well, we're here at one of the shelters here at Estumbo. So how many people, do you have a gauge of how many people are here right now? You know, I don't have that exact count, but we've been do doing the assessments by families, and this will be the second uh, shelter, and we're going to another shelter after this. Right, and can you walk us through what those assessments entail? Uh, yes, the assessments entail, uh, uh, well, the reason for all the assessments is that we have the National Red Cross here from off island with a lot of volunteers. They have like 200 volunteers here on island now. And they have to get 85% of the assessments complete so that they can see what the real need is for the island so they can get the help in. Right. And all, all the supplies and medicine and all that. And as far as the assessment, what has the team been uh, looking at? Um, what are people really crying out for after Typhoon Mawar? All right. Of all the we're do right now it's the assessments with the shelters. Now, most of the folks don't have a home to go back to. They lost their home. Uh, so when we do the assessments, we're finding out what their immediate needs are, what they lost, and most of them don't even know where they're going once once we did the assessment. That's the majority of the people you see in the shelters right now. So. Um, and obviously it's a tough, tough position for everybody that is, is here. Um, yeah. So what has their response been like to the American Red Cross's presence and the national presence here? You know, they've been very receptive to it. They're helpful because somebody is sitting down with them, actually asking them what their needs are and letting them know that it's going to take a little while, but that all these other organizations on Guam, FEMA, the Red Cross, and all these others are here to help, and that there's going to be a lot more assistance coming. Right. And that calms them down a little bit. It makes them feel a little better. But right now, their biggest uncertainty is, is when they close down the shelters, where are they going to go? Uh, we found out that a lot of the families here, they were leasing to own on their land, and they built these wooden houses with tin and stuff. And now everything is gone. So the, the, the key things that they've been asking for, they want to go back to their land to where their house was. But the main things they want, they're going to need a tent. They're asking for cots to stay on, uh, portable potties. A big thing is food and water. And, and things that your basic needs that you need just to survive are the types of things that the uh, shelter occupants have been identifying. Right. Yeah. And how uh, does that process look like? How are you guys di distributing those needs to those people who are in need of them? Okay. Uh, I'm going to answer that in two parts. First of all, up at the Sinahana Mayor's Office, we have a main distribution center. We have coordinated with all of the mayors on the island, and over the last week, they've been delivering truckloads of water coolers, uh, tarps, uh, cleanup kits and things on that nature to the designated areas in each village and all the folks that need it have been up there getting those supplies. So they've made, I don't know, eight, ten deliveries to each village and, it, and that's continuing. They have more coming in. So that's in process there. On the other side, once we get the assessments and stuff done, uh, we'll determine what we can get and what assistance we can get, but we're not duplicating because you got our big brother out there, FEMA, and they have a lot of the tents and things that they're going to be giving out to the mayors to give to the people. So you have all these efforts going on, and so we're coordinating with each other to make sure there's not a duplication, and everybody's just like a bunch of ants. They're getting together, putting it back together. And of course, uh, the American Red Cross is also accepting volunteers, to my understanding. So if people are interested in helping the cause, how can they volunteer? The way they can volunteer is they can go down to the Hilton Hotel, ask where the Red Cross room is, walk in there and volunteer. And there's a lot of people there that will help them and show them where they need the help. I was down there checking in this morning before we went out in the field. We had two young volunteers from Guam walk in saying, how can I help? Yeah. Right on. It's 
beautiful thing, and I see you're getting emotional. Well, thank you, Dan. Thank you for all that you do for everybody here during this difficult time and beyond.